So with your Mitzi kit, you will have a plastic bag that contains your white shoelaces. There should be four shoelaces in this plastic bag, as well as your Halloween mat. It is all clipped together so that the three layers are ready to be laced with the holes all lined up between the three layers. So first of all, take your little plastic bag and remove one of your shoelaces, or you can remove all of them and just set them aside. Take your first shoelacing and holding on to the aglet, you can start in any hole on the corners of the, the four corners of your mat. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to take my aglet and I'm going to go top down through that corner hole and pull the shoelace through until I have, oh, about two, three inches of a tail left on top. And then, so what I'm going to show you how to do is an overcast stitch. If you've done Mitzi kits before, you're familiar with this. If not, it's real easy. Just follow these instructions. So your lacing has come through the bottom. We're going to bring it over the top edge of the fabric. And then we are going to take our aglet and go top down through the next hole, just adjacent to the last hole you laced. And you're going to pull it through again. And you can see why it's called the overcast stitch because it creates this little stitch over the top edge of the fabric. So we came through the back and we're gonna come up over the edge again and go top down through the next hole. Now, if you are blind or visually impaired, these um, tactile bordered holes that are around the four sides of your project make it easy for you to do this by touch. They are about an inch apart. So once you've laced your hole, I'm going from my right to my left. And so I would slide my thumb and my index finger from the hole that I just let, laced to my left until I feel the next set of holes, which again is about an inch away from the last ones that I just laced through. Then I'm gonna come up over the edge again with my shoelace and go top down through that next hole. So we're gonna continue doing this. Now, sometimes you'll see like right here, your shoelace might get twisted up. Simply just turn it with your fingers and pull it through. You want to pull it through so that the shoelacings are snug along the top, but not so tight that you're starting to make your fabric crinkle at the top. You want it just loosely hugging the top of the fabric. Okay, and so we will continue going top down through the rest of the holes until I get to the next to the last hole from the corner. I'm going to stop at that next to the last hole. You can also kind of straighten out your shoelace as you go um, along the top just to make it a little easier. These are nice, um, thick cotton shoelaces, so it makes it uh, very decorative as well as functional to lace these layers together. And you can see I'm untwisting as I go. I keep going. This is a great project to do with a loved one. If your loved one um, is having trouble with pulling the lacing through. You can do it as a partner project where you help to start with putting the aglet through the hole and start pulling and then allow them to pull the rest of the way through. So it can be a fun project to do together. Now, um, the last thing you're going to do, so I'm, I've come to the next to the last hole from the corner. And instead of going top down through this corner, I'm gonna go bottom up. And the reason for that is because we want our tails to be all on the top. So now my tails in both corners are on the top. Now I can see that my shoelace on my left is much longer the tail than on my right. Simple fix to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling on these stitches 
on the top of the stitches from my left where it's too long so that I'll pull this first one here so that this lacing gets shorter and I want it not quite as short as this one because I'm going to make this one longer but almost as short so I pull that up and then I'm going to pull every lacing to the right of that until it pulls the length of the shoelace over to the right end. I'm just, again, trying to even out my tails. And it's a simple process. It takes a little bit of finger dexterity, which is a good exercise for people. Oh, and as you come to these plastic clips that are holding your project together, you can take those off once you've laced it. Okay, and then once I get to here, and there. Now my laces are about the same length on either corner. So now I'm going to turn my project one quarter to the right, and I am going to take my second shoelace, and now I can measure the right amount of tail by comparing it to the last tail in this corner. So I'm gonna pull that tail that we just laced in that corner over so that the hole in this corner is opened up and I can put my shoelace aglet for my new lacing down the side the lacing that was already laced up through. So I'm going top down and I'm gonna pull it through and then keep pulling. Then I'm going to, until those two tails now that are in that corner are about the same length. And then I'm gonna follow the same instructions from before, coming up over the edge and top down through. I'm going from my right to my left to with them. I take off this plastic clip again, come over the top. And remember, in that last corner hole, we're gonna go up through the bottom so that the tail is now on top. And now, because we started with the right length, they're about even on both sides. Again, turn your project one quarter to the right. Of course, if you're left-handed, you might be doing this in the opposite direction. So you might be going left to right and turning, turning your project as you go um, from that direction. So again, you wanna start in that same corner hole where your last shoelace came up through, kind of pull it over and then insert your aglet top down through right beside that last tail and pull the lacing through until your tail is about even with the one that was just there. Okay, here's the last one. So again, gonna go bottom up through this last corner hole beside the shoelace that was already there. And there you go. Now you see you have two tails on each of the four corners. And so the last step is just to simply tie these into a cute little bow. So I'm gonna make the, the knot fairly tight and make a little bow in each corner. There's one, and I'm gonna tie the second. Even them out. And these make awesome gifts too. If you wanted to provide a nice little gift for someone, this could be accompanied with their own little little uh, tub of candy, um, or you could put cookies in there if you like to bake, make something extra special. Okay. And there you go. Your little mat is complete. So this project is the same instructions as what is needed to complete your hut pad kit. And you'll simply follow the same instructions as we had for the Halloween project kit.